Hello. It's, uh, it's been a while, isn't it? Um, still been playing games, just not necessarily recording videos. Um, today, on the table, I'm looking at North Africa 41, one of the uh, one of the Simonich, uh, sort of 4X series that has been, I guess, around now for quite a while. And if you did watch my top 10, you'd Remember, there were a few of them in that. Um, I've got most of them. I think I haven't got the France one or the the Normandy one. The sort of Normandy one's very weather dependent, I think, from memory. But I played all the others: um, Salerno, um, Holland, uh, Stalingrad, uh, uh, Ukraine '43, both first and second edition, actually. So. Excited to see this one when it came out. Um, picked it up a while back, and um, it sat for a while, not as long as others on the shelf. Um, so what it's not, it's not a, uh, a reimagining of uh, the Legend Begins, which I also have. That was done by Terran Games, also by Simonich many many years ago, and there was, I think, when it was first. On the schedule, there was talk it was going to be, you know, Legend Begins 2. It's not that, because um, that uh, older title is actually um, the entire war in um, in Africa for a start. Um, this focuses on 1941, as the title would uh, suggest. Uh, although there are expansions coming along, there's, I think there's already there's a, a North Africa 40 on the P500, um, which I'll be interested to see what they do with that. Um, this plays much quicker than The Legend Begins. That was a, a chip pull with primary, secondary and tertiary chits on each side giving you know full two thirds and one third movement and a bit more detailed and uh, magnitude combats and quite a lot to uh, commend it. but. Um, this this plays much quicker, so I've got it on the on the physical table and also on the on the virtual table, and it, it plays nicely with Vassal because um, the turns are quite punchy. It's not you know you do a turn in sometimes five minutes, um, so I think it does offer something different to uh, the other the other games in the series. It's a you know a two mapper, albeit a, a long thin map. A um, couple of play aids, which is really all you need once you've read the rules. Um, it's nice to have a, two copies. Um, maybe other companies could uh, take note from that that you know these are not solitaire games, and having two copies of the play aids would be useful. Not that I'm mentioning any. Uh, a most fearful sacrifice. The update kit has just provided me with um, a very nice um, reproofed and reprinted uh, play aid cards, but you know, one, one copy. <laughs> Whatever. Um, so the contents is nice, it's well produced, it's classic, uh, you know, GMT uh, stuff. Um, but it's not typical Zotbon Simonich stuff. In that um, there, there are no Zot ones. Um, there are overlapping Zocs, which affect retreats and supply trace, but no Zot bonds as such. So you can, you know, move from Zot to Zot and then stop. You can't be. Uh, there's no Zot bond wall that uh, prevents entry, uh, which the other ones in the series use. And I think that's probably justifiable here, given the nature of the of the fighting in the desert, uh, confused, fluid, you know, sandstorms, vast open spaces. Um, the other thing which I missed early on was that even in a lot of the games, you know, you you can ignore. The zoc of the of the units. If you yeah, if you have a combat and you eliminate a defender, um, typically the rules say 
something like you know you can ignore the zoc uh, of the hex that you've just cleared so you can enter the defender's hex even if it's in a, a zoc from a different unit this one is um, similar but it adds a very important addition that says that you may ignore the defending hex um, both as you enter and exit so that's quite big um, so you can ignore other Zox as you exit the hex that your target was in and that really frees up um, post combat movement uh, you have you can form breakthrough groups with formations and um, you know, go on to to fight again um, so that gives the combat a different a different feel to many of the of the others in the series it's a good thing probably a bit more linear I would think in terms of you know how a game's going to play out um, you know you've only really got one axis of advance um, you know, the allies could try and do a bit more of a, a fighting a withdrawal um, they're going to get back to Tobruk they're going to try and defend Tobruk if it falls early which it has done in my on table game I think it's still early to say but it's then it's tough because victory is just determined by airfields and uh, the I think it's the Gambook airfield which is just east of Tobruk if the Axis capture that and they get Crete by default on about turn six that gives them four airfields and for most of the game the VPs are judged with a baseline of three so once you get to four you're going to start to accrue VPs every turn and that's quite good because it does it gives the Allies the pressure to attack they can't just afford to sit back and I think when we'll build up, we'll build up because the clock's ticking and the the axes are accumulating VPs. So you know, Mr. Churchill is is watching you, and he, he wants he wants some action. He wants some uh, counterattacking. So that's that seems to work well. Um, I mean, you know, things like Arden Forty Four. There's many different battles going on across the whole breadth of the front so you know some successes some failures some breakthroughs some some stalling going on so uh, this this is less diverse you know there's a, a single thrust really um, but I guess you, you sort of know that when you get into the campaign because if you that's kind of how it played out um, but the the turns can be very quick as I mentioned earlier and you can have a lull um, because supply is critical in the game and you only get two supply points every turn and the turn is typically two or three impulses two in the summer and three when it's not summer and you need to spend a supply to attack and you need to spend a supply to use your artillery um, so that could be two supply and you use supply for uh, uh, determined defence if you're using your artillery to support the uh, determined defence so there's many ways to spend it and there ain't much of it so, so there is fortunately a lull option where if you just do a little bit of tactical movement you can accrue supply uh, but against that there's also supply attrition so the further you advance from your home base either the Tripoli or the Nile Delta, the more chance there is of you just burning supply just for you know, being on the map. So um, the, the reins of supply are tight and it, it, it does feel, it feels right. You know, you're, the guy I'm playing against is an old, an old friend and he's saying, oh, you know, I, I'm trying to accumulate, I need at least five or six supply to be able to launch a, a reasonable offensive, which is probably true, but if you if you wait that long it might be too late and um, he's, he's trying to ship some supply into Tobruk um, to uh, allow him to keep using his artillery in Tobruk to do a determined defence and it's all, it's all quite exciting stuff so um, 
yeah, I like it. I mean, um, it feels different from the others. Um, so it does does play quickly. Um, what else could we say about it? Um, just to, say. to to continue, just had a slight um, requirement to uh, answer the phone there. Um, yeah, just I think it's good. I'm going to show you the map. Um, there's only what 19, 19 turns, but to say some of those have got many impulses, but the impulses are quite quite quick so it's probably one of the quicker playing of, of the series so I'll show you um, show you the map and um, that'll be enough the map just to give you an idea of the footprint this table is six foot long so you you're just under that it's about um, about five and a half feet um, I'm having to go at the campaign game we're on to uh, Turn 13, and this is where the action is. Uh, here is uh, Mr. Brook that fell to the axis, which I know is uh, not historical, but that's what happened. Um, and now we are fighting sort of around Bardia, the Hellfire Pass, and the Germans are suffering in terms of their tank steps. I think they've only got about three tank steps left um, in the game at the moment. There's a few replacements coming on, but um, they're pretty pretty rare. Um, and you've got to get them from Italy. So you come from Italy, you roll on the Italy table, which is uh, influenced by the the Malta status and we're now on a plus two which is a bad thing so if you roll a, a six or more there's a chance of the convoy being intercepted and then you roll for losses that arrives in Tripoli and then makes its way all around the coast through Benghazi uh, you can pay uh, resource points to actually come out of Italy and go straight to Benghazi I'm still going to roll on the various tables to determine the fate of the convoys. You have interesting little chits which you can either roll for an event or you can pay for with resource points, things like the, the air support. You've got Rommel to allow you to uh, re-roll a combat involving the Germans or moving a German stack a bit further. Little bits of chrome Commander Supremo is required for joint Italian-German operations. That again costs a resource point. And the Allies have got a similar toolbox with um, there's the uh, long-range desert group and uh, strafing air and air support and additional convoys and all this good stuff. So that's where we are at the minute. And I think that this is the airfield I mentioned. Gambut, which is defended quite well by the axis now and that gives them that gives them four airfields and as you'll see on the turn record track three is the target so every time you go through you have your impulses two or three depending on the weather it'll go back to three next turn then you have a victory point check and that'll be another one for the Germans thank you very much and they're currently on five so it'll be six at the end of this turn, and unless the act, the Allies manage to get their act together, that's just going to get worse, particularly on the last couple of turns. So they've got to do something. Now, although they are better off in terms of armour, um, I've just had a big exchange where two, two lots of 88s got um, taken out in exchange results, but they did give their their steps dearly because they can essentially double the number of losses to the uh, Allied tank. So the Allied tanks have been thinned out, and then there was a German Italian counter attack, which was these are disrupted Allied units here, and they haven't got much to sort of push back with. So it could be a bit tricky, but I'm still going to play on for a couple of turns until it looks like it's a lost cause. But 
hopefully that's given you some sort of feel for the game. Um, but let's say it's a it's a pretty clean one. Plays nicely and um, pleased to have it in the collection.